1898's International Urban Planning Conference in New York urgently discussed a major public health issue that largely sorted itself out 30 years later. What was it? And I'll say that again. 1898's International Urban Planning Conference in New York urgently discussed a major public health issue that largely sorted itself out 30 years later. What was it? Commence the bafflement. <laughs> Could it be something to do with the buildings of New York, maybe? Because it's time when skyscrapers were starting to be a thing, I guess. That's fair. Yeah, then... Oh, no, I do know this. 1930-something was the Empire State Building, right? But 1920-something was the Chrysler Building, right? Okay, well, that's interesting. Do we think, like, 1928, the 30 years later, when this problem resolved itself? Is there a connection there? I don't think the Chrysler Building took 30 years to build, but it feels like it could be something to do with heights of buildings or things that you use to build a skyscraper with. The urban, like, was the sun in the way? <laughs> and then suddenly they built a big, tall building that blocked it out. <laughs> and they were like, thank goodness, some shade. Well, how good are we at history? That is, that is urban planning. That, is this a pre-car thing? We all know when cars were invented, guys. Well, so I think that's a thing, right? I think that's a very good thought because I was going to say, like, it's a history question. So the first step for the history question is that we just start saying everything we know about 1898, about New York and about 1928, right? Once we have all of those facts, we'll just have the answer. But cars is a good thought. I like cars. Was it was it the first ever traffic jam so none of the cars could go anywhere so they couldn't go any faster than three miles an hour or something <laughs> like that because there were too many cars? I don't think New York sorted that out right now. Mm. Oh, traffic in New York, it's great. You can drive everywhere. Um, <laughs> yeah, just, just very, very slowly. <laughs> can, can you take the metro? No, probably broken. Can you take the bus? Oh, if you're lucky. Can you, you can drive there. Uh, you can drive. Just very, very slowly. Were there cars around then in New York City? Is this a thing? Yeah, see, this is what I don't know. What was the status of a car in 1898? In 1910, I'm happy to say there's probably a car somewhere around New York City. 1898, I, I, don't, I don't know my car-based chronology. Luckily, Daniel knows everything about cars. Uh, they've got wheels. Hopefully... Mm. They've got wheels. <laughs> Good ones. It's either that or just suddenly New York is taken over by military tanks and vehicles with treads. And I feel like at that point, there are, there are bigger problems going on mm, with both mm. New York and the world. <laughs> True. Ooh, maybe something to do with Central Park then. Ah, ah, maybe this is a point where New York was slowly starting to get built up and they were wanting mm. to know, well, where do we, where is Central Park? I've been keeping my mouth shut during this section, but I'll tell you, you were a lot closer with cars. No! <laughs> oh, but, I, but I was feeling so much better about the buildings. I know what a building is. So was was it like a horse and cart problem? And then cars came along, they're like, oh, there's horse and carts are oh. playing havoc with these New York streets. Yeah, by 1928, anything that you put in place to solve a horse problem is irrelevant because the horses... They've gone. They, they're gone. Well, no, they're still there, but they're just not no, pulling. They're, they're hiding. <laughs> Some in the restaurants rather than the, the streets. <laughs> yeah. uh, so what was the public health issue that sorted itself out that was a desperate problem in 1898? Well, you know how car you know how cars have emissions. <laughs> yes. yes. Yes, yes. So do horse and carts. <laughs> yes, they do. And that's going to be the issue that would have been literally needed to be cleaned up. It's going to have oh. to be the, the, the poop on the roads. You're spot on. It was literally a problem that was piling up over time as New York got more and more and more horses and carriages. And then along came the horseless carriage and sorted it all out. Yes, cars don't poop, do they? And that's probably a bonus for them. <laughs> that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> 